There's science that's going on that cannot be done any other way. It can't be done with a balloon. It can't be done with a power engine, plane, collecting air samples. As we're flying the airplane, we're gathering science data so that uh, researchers can better understand the atmosphere. Einar's vision 10 years ago, he explained to me, was this should be a scientific research platform, that this glider should operate for 20 years, regularly going to altitudes with instruments from universities and uh, people that just need to have an instrument taken up that high. With a team that is this good and recognized worldwide as, as being extraordinarily qualified. We're civilian and we're volunteers. We're doing it because we love it. And it's just like so cool. And we're trying to get some interns straight out of college and get them into our program. Two of them are now employees of Airbus. These high altitude flights are done in Southern Argentina where the conditions are the best uh, in the world. Southern Argentina, we have a phenomenon called the polar vortex, which helps the mountain way go to very high altitude. If we could fly higher than the SR-71 was able to maintain level flight, then we become not the highest flying subsonic airplane in history, but we become the highest flying airplane, period. Finally, we got the container here a couple of days ago. And uh, now we can start assembling the glider and uh, get ready for the first flight. We improved a lot of the instrumentation inside the glider, measuring the positions of the controls, the forces the pilot's putting in. The systems on board this glider are much more complex than any other soaring glider ever built. What the Egret does is the Egret makes sure that every flight is a stratospheric flight. So we needed an airplane that could fly between 40 and 50,000 feet, pulling a load like, like the Perlin, and fly slow enough that we could actually stay with it. Basically, you connect the glider to the rope and you start a normal takeoff. I can pull the power back a little bit and level off to just level, and then we can go to the areas where we think the lift is doesn't have to release and then descend trying to find the lift. We can let them go in the lift, which really can save a lot of time. Where we're going is the coldest part of the atmosphere. And this isn't just industrial cold. This isn't walking into a freezer cold. This is planetary cold. This is surface of Mars cold. And, uh, and this will help in the future for science, checking what's going on with the ozone layer, you know, and many, many things. And from there, you know, we see what that lets us do. So hopefully that means safe, high-altitude flights, doing uh, interesting research where no one else is. It's a great achievement because what it tells you about the performance of the aircraft is that it's the best performing aircraft in history.